All right, what is going on, everyone? If you have been under a rock, let me tell you that season five of Street Fighter V has been out for a few weeks now, and we've all had a little bit of time to get used to the new balance changes, but most importantly, to get used to V-Shift. And I have been thinking about what is the most important ways to use V-Shift, because I think this mechanic is a lot more subtle and a lot more difficult to optimize than people might have previously have thought. Obviously, you can just press V-Shift whenever you want, and try to build some space. It's kind of like uh, a backdash on steroids, right? Backdash mixed with uh, some parry options in it. But I'm taking notes from other YouTube channels and I'm gonna be listening to the top five ways that you need to be using V-Shift right now because if you put things in a list, it's automatically more likely to go viral and people can't resist clicking on it. So that's why we're putting it in a list form. So I got five ways that I have found to be very valuable to use V-Shift and you guys might wanna consider trying them out and seeing if that might help you out. One of the most important uses of V-Shift, which might not be immediately obvious, is what it kind of replaces. So here's a very common string here we have with Honda. You know, Honda is a plus frames master. Um, he gets the hands, he gets the sequence. And if you try to challenge it at pretty much any point, you know, you're gonna get blown up. Um, I mean, you might be able to three frame that one, four frames get blown up then it sets up the spacing trap right here, which is very difficult to deal with. And you might be saying, okay, sure, but you have V-reversal. Previously, I would just V-reversal this pretty much every time. Once you did the EX butt splash, I'd be like, okay, we're trading meter for meter, right? You give me your EX bar, I'll give you my V-bar, but we're going back to neutral to get Honda off. However, this is where you need to consider the new mechanic. So instead of doing V-reversal, why not V-Shift? V-Shift, if done successfully, where the parry activates, it's actually less expensive. V-Reversal, no matter what, this costs one bar. One bar V-Meter. However, in this can sequence, you know V-Shift will always activate. It costs half a bar. So it's a much cheaper option than V-Reversal. It can sometimes net you a punish. So in this situation, mid-screen, I'm only like plus five, plus four if I V-Shift the headbutt. So there's nothing Balrog can do. If you have like a really fast super, like a Kami super or a Chun-Li super, you might be able to punish there. So that would be great. But for my character, um, I can at least go back to neutral with a V-Break. That is actually a punish there. And I can get the guaranteed knockdown for half a V meter instead of a full V meter. Pretty good value. So that's, I think, a usage that a lot of people aren't thinking about. It's just a cheaper V reversal for some strings. Obviously, if it's airtight, that's when you use a V reversal like the hand strings. But for EX Butt Splash, much better to V shift it. More bang for your buck than to do V reversal. Let's take this string to the corner. Let's, let's look at this from this point of view. Remember I told you I was plus four, plus five. Mid screen, I can't do much. If I'm in the corner, I actually get a punish. That is a true punish. Honda is sitting there blocking after this is done. V-Shift allows you to blow up aggressive homing moves with plus frames. This is, I mean, this should be one of the obvious uses of it, but I'm gonna put it down as the number two thing you need to be doing with V-Shift. There is a class of move, I would say, where you can get guaranteed punishes with your V-Shift that were just not possible before. Previously with these strings, the best you could do is hope to V-reversal, get out of there. If you're in the corner, you block this part, uh, the up part with the, the butt splash, it's a guaranteed punish. Potentially into big damage, right? So you need to be using V-Shift to punish these moves and you're gonna have to figure out what moves that include. So another sort of move like that would be Honda Headbutt. Light Headbutt at this range is a negative four on block, but pretty much nobody has a punish for this at this range. Nobody can do anything about it. So you kind of just have to take it and he's out of spacing where like your jabs whiff and he might counter poke you and put you into some, some counter poke situations. These types of moves, especially this one, it's pretty slow. You need to be reactionary V shifting. You can get fat punishes. They're gonna vary though. So at this distance, like I might not be able to get a full crouching fierce punish at this distance, right? So there's a lot of variability with what punish options you're gonna get based on your character and the spacing and the timing. Up close, definitely get a fat punish. Further away, you might have to figure out what your options are, settle for a sweep. Um, you can always V-break, but I would recommend getting the real damage. These types of moves, EX Butt Splash, Honda Headbutt, M. Bison, right? M. Bison, EX Devil's Reverse. So this move is super powerful to get plus frames. So Bison was plus a bajillion after you block this. And here's the kicker, you can't V-reversal it. However, these types of moves, you can still V-break. The V-Shift activates earlier, the V-Break comes out earlier. So you can actually get a V-Break knockdown. There might be a bunch of moves that you kind of just have learned to take over the years because they're, they're plus, they're homing, they get in. They're hard to punish. 
and you know they're coming, but you can't do anything about it. You need to be V-shifting these moves because otherwise you're letting your opponents get away with stuff. It's only half a bar, so hit the lab and uh, don't let people get away with those aggressive homing moves. We segue to Bison for a reason because the next way that you need to be using V-shift, number three, we're counting, it's a list, very important. The list part is the most important part of the, about this, is autopilot meaty strings. You need to be using V-shift against autopilot meaty strings because you can get huge fat punishes on them. So here's one of the most common situations with M Bison. It's back throw into down forward fierce. And why is this so common? If you uh, played against Bison, you know why. It's meaty. It's super meaty, right? So this back throw, if I try to press my three frame here, it will definitely crush counter me, lead to huge damage. If I try to do my EX armor, that's a no-go. It's too meaty. If I try to move, do anything, even backdash, it keeps me grounded. It hits very meaty. I'm not sure if it's frame one or two, but it's at least on frame one or two. So it keeps you locked down, which opens up the mind game for M. Bison to condition you with that in order to sneak in a dash after the fact. However, because it's such like the default option for M. Bison, this opens up the opportunity for you to apply V-Shift. And if you saw there, I'm actually plus 10 on that V-Shift. That is a punish. Previously, when I would play Bison players, I would pretty much always just V reversal the moment I block this, because um, I just don't want to give them the turn. I'm just spending V bar left and right to get them off me, and that was kind of the strategy. But now I can do the same thing for half a bar and potentially get punishes. It's a little tight being a charge character that can be difficult, so you got to see what options you have. I have to practice this myself. There you go. These sort of set play strings that people used to always uh, kind of just rinse and repeat, if it uses heavier moves, it might not be guaranteed anymore. Now, obviously, uh, this might open up the the, uh, the mind game here, right? If I just autopilot V-shift, not that, but if I autopilot V-shift this, he can make some kind of crazy read dash up and crush counter me, right? There is uh, an answer to this, but at least you have something to make them think twice about you can even attempt to react to the down forward fierce itself. And this opens up the door for you to then st start waking up with buttons to challenge his overextension. It's a lot less cut and dry than it used to be with um, the previous meta without V-Shift. Also, keep in mind that this is pretty common to use in the corner as well. You can definitely get a much bigger punish in this case. So... Mid screen, you're gonna have to probably figure out what your optimal punish is. In the corner, you can get huge fat punishes for pretty much everybody in the cast. Look for meaty setups that characters often resort to. There's plenty of setups that are now punishable if you have V meter. Keep that in mind. That's number three on the most important things you need to be doing with V shift right now. But number four will have you mind blown. Oh my God, number four. Let's get into that one. Number four involves our good friend Zangief here and his grappling ability. So let's kind of get a quick rundown on how this character works. He lands an SPD and you lose. That's how the game works, right? The idea with Zangief is if he lands like a heavy or EX SPD and he dashes at you, that should be a real SPD loop. I just can't record it. As I was saying, the dash up SPD will beat your buttons. Like there I am pressing my three frame. It's definitely gonna cleanly beat my three frame buttons in this instance. Nothing I can do there besides try to get out of the way. If he instead decides to go meaty, he can do that as well. If I'm pressing my three frame, it'll beat that as well. So once he lands his heavy or EX SPD dashes up, you're just guessing on the Oki situation there. There's ways to smoke your back dash as well. So this is where V shift comes into play. V shift adds another layer to command grab Oki. It is not a catch all, but it does force grapplers to think twice, especially mid screen on their grappler pressure. So this is the number four way you need to be using V-Shift. You need to be using V-Shift to dodge your way out of these command grabs. It's like a safer backdash, EX backdash. So let's go back to that one heavy command grab situation here. If I decide to V-Shift, if I quick rise into it and decide to V-Shift, you'll see that I just get out scot-free. Easy. Big punish for me. I'm such a genius. Why would you ever go for command grab into command grab? Ha 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 ha. Right? Same idea here if he goes for the meaty. There you go. I'm out. Um, normally he wouldn't cancel to the Lariat, but basically you get out. I might not get a punish if he goes for the lights, but at least I get out. And then say he goes for the gusto here on the back dash read. And I V shift that. I also get a fat punish, right? 
So it just provides a lot of options for the grappler player to think about so that you can't just always autopilot into the, the Oki situations over and over. However, like I said, this is not a catch-all thing. There are still answers, which Geek players have already been figuring out. So let's check this out here. Meaty throw. If you V-shift a meaty throw, your V-shift won't go into the slow-mo. You'll just backdash. But where does that leave you? Let's see what happens if I try to V-shift that meaty throw. I am holding up back after V-shifting the regular grab. If he does meaty regular grab, Zangief recovers in time and is in range to do another light SPD because V-shift has more recovery on it than a backdash. That is the downside to it. Obviously, it has a parry, has a slow mode that activates, totally invincible, has all these upsides. The downside is it has more recovery than a backdash. If I backdash this situation, I will not be forced to take the grab, right? If I if I backdash the regular grab, I can get out of there. It's not a punish. If I V-shift, it's a true punish. So there's still options. However, if he does a light SPD in this situation, I V-shift out, he light SPDs, the mix-up is over. After a light SPD, he actually can't dash in to force another mix-up. However, what if he does EX SPD? Oh, you, you are in the mix. Grapple players still have answers. Apparently, like, uh, I think M. Bison, Chun-Li, and Jury might get out of this. So some V-shifts travel further back than others. So they're not all 100% made equal. So you're, you're going to have to figure that out with your characters, interactions with Zangief, and you learn your matchups. But overall, having V-shift to use as an option here is just amazing to escape this vortex. It's no longer just a pure sort of like 50-50, like really getting into your mind. There, there are mind games or there's ways to beat V-Shift. They might have to slow down their pressure, let you wake up, let the V-Shift occur, then punish it. That might open up the door for you to wake up jab, wake up regular throw. You know, you can start mashing on wake up versus geef and it might work more. There's a lot more layers of reads going on here. So you make sure to employ that when playing against grappler players to make it not such a coin flip and make it uh, a much bigger brain game. That's four, right? We're on number five, number five of the five ways you need to be using V-Shift right now. Number five will leave you in shock and awe. Oh my goodness. So the final way you should be using V-Shift, this is a technique that you would hope most Ryu players recognize and Akuma players. Here's Seth doing crouching medium kick into light Tatsu, right? Everyone knows it, everyone loves it. Very difficult to punish. You might be able to sweep at certain ranges, but at a lot of ranges, it's pretty safe. Uh, a tiny gap here, but at least if you're up close, you can actually get a punish, right? However, what if it becomes medium Tatsu? Okay, that's actually only negative four. Like, there's no way my jab is going to reach here. These are my four frame moves, so there's no way I'm going to punish this. However, there's a much bigger gap here. There's a much bigger gap, and I can actually interrupt Seth and hit Seth out of this move, and then potentially interrupt the string and get a very, very large combo. What about Heavy Kick? Heavy Kick is the slowest startup but it's actually plus two on block for Seth. If I press move but, uh, any of my buttons after the block Tatsu, I'm gonna get counter hit, I'm gonna get thrown, I'm gonna get beat up. So this is the string that Seth uses to steal a turn and keep the pressure going. But once again, you know, there's a much bigger gap in this sequence, right? If you call it out, you will get a fat punish. But once again, how are you gonna tell? So if I go back to the light Tatsu, there's no way for me to get a punish on the light Tatsu here. Right? Pressing my 3 frame, the best we can do is trade. Maybe I can do EX up or if I react right away. This is the mix up that Seth has going for himself when he does low forward into Tatsu or any kind of string into Tatsu. All these different variations, very difficult to tell. And if you don't interrupt the heavy one, Seth gets an extra turn and can uh, apply more pressure. So I can do this. So nothing's happening here up against the light Tatsu, but that's the least of our worries. If they miss space, that one that's going to be punishable and I can get my turn back at least. But what about that? So if I mash V-Shift on the light one, it comes out. What if I mash V-Shift for the medium kick one? Okay, it comes out. Why don't I just mash it, right? Let me go to the heavy one. What happens if I mash it? Smoked. I get smoked. But if I delay it enough, I can blow Seth up. You need to OS 
turn stealing strings with V-Shift. I was referring to Ryu and Akuma players earlier because this is the same exact technique you would do with OS Parry for these types of strings. You do a late V-Shift and you are able to option select your V-Shift to happen only when they do the turn stealing string. So whenever they do the light one, you won't get a V-Shift. But I can still sweet punish. I can sweet punish. They do a heavy one, my V-Shift comes out. That was a light one. There's a medium one. V-Shift comes out. So basically, you will time your V-Shift to beat both heavy and medium Tatsu. But light Tatsu, you'll just block. This is a guaranteed answer. Once you get the timing down and you see the cancel occur, this will beat it every time. I'm always inputting the V-Shift, even on the light Tatsu. And I'm getting a guaranteed punish on any one of these strings without any guesswork involved. So this string goes from being a guess, which could potentially lead to you getting knocked down or uh, letting Seth get away with a lot more plus frames, to being a guaranteed punish every single time. And this is not going to be the only instance when this applies, right? You can just imagine any other scenario where people have strings where they could do one version which is slower but it gives plus frames and one that's faster but it's negative you can now start employing these v shift option selects on defense if you start incorporating this into your game you can turn these mix-up situations into guaranteed punishes for huge damage potentially for you and uh, that seth pressure might not seem so scary anymore and whenever people start getting too too familiar with the fake stuff you can blow them up for it yeah nikali stomps that's another one the mix up between doing the light, medium, or heavy Nikali Stomp. Kage Axe Kick. That one's kind of hard. I tried that one. That one's pretty tight. Some of them will be easier than others. But that is why this is the number five most important thing you need to be doing with V Shift. That's all I got for you. Uh, I put it in list format. We'll see if the clickbait makes this video go crazy. But, you know, I just had a bunch of V Shift tips and I've been trying to think of ways to use it myself. So I thought really I would share that with you guys and try to get the, the creative juices going. Because, yeah, you can just kind of throw V Shift out. And it's great but there's a lot of actual focus uses and um my ranked opponents are not using it they're not using it yet um maybe you guys aren't using it as well but i think with a lot of labbing or just at least a little bit you can start interrupting a lot more strings a lot more moves and get big damage actually on defense and be able to win matchups that you weren't able to win before so that's all i got if you enjoyed the video if you like lists i, I know you do make sure to subscribe to the channel we got more street fighter 5 content coming of course and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.